open injury for a cure. He's been around the area. He's a great spokesperson for the for the sport in general. And uh, he's going to have an amazing run. He's a super strong athlete. A lot of people don't realize, but Justin actually has competed a few seasons on this show. Um, and then he stopped getting callbacks. Uh, the process for the show, you have to submit a video and then get a callback. Um, so when he didn't get a callback, he ended up being a tester. Uh, so he would be one of the guys that would go out there, do the grunt work, and help set the difficulty level of the course. Uh, so he's a really experienced veteran. Now, Henry, you've had a lot of experience testing. Um, how much do you think it helps in terms of going out and competing the season after um, having that experience on the obstacle? Definitely twofold. Uh, one, having experience on, on the different obstacles is huge. Um, American Ninja Warrior is notorious for bringing in brand new obstacles, but they're also notorious for bringing in repeats that were popular. So, um, one, if you get to practice something that was in the that that's going to be the following year, you're going to have a huge advantage. Two, um, producers watch testing. Uh, they're always looking for uh, for top athletes, and if you test well. That's always a, a good a good bonus um, if you ever if you're aspiring ninja and you want to get on the show at one point is if you don't get a call for the show go test do well show the producers what you're capable of and uh, they might give you a call back the following year. That's a really good point. Uh, a lot of people see testing as almost like a tryout to get on the show and to show producers that you are really capable and a strong athlete. Um, from your experience, have you seen testers go from the testing side onto the competing side? Uh, absolutely. Um, Unless you want to take this one. I, I actually have a yeah. story about testing. Um, I tested in Orlando in a and 7, and that is where I first saw Erica Cook. Yes. Um, she was basically staying dry the whole time. She was beasting every yes. obstacle. And I just remember them asking her her name specifically. And, and we love the, Erica Cook. We love Erica. She's awesome. Um, if you guys haven't ever seen Erica Cook, you should definitely check her out on the internet. She's super strong. Um, but the producers asked what her name was, and then the next year she was on the show. So I thought that's a cool story. And with that said, Justin Conway, I'm going to call this right now because I know Justin really well and how strong and what he's capable of. This is his type of course. If he doesn't make any mistakes, he's going to clear this thing. Super strong. Yeah, I feel like Justin is such a strong athlete. Where he usually suffers is those tricky technical things, getting them for the first time. So right here at the Warrior Factory, we have a pretty straightforward strength-based course, and I think it really plays to what Justin's capable of. Yep, and there's the shelf grab right here, and he's got the dismount. This is awesome. Uh, so a couple people were asking, um, I guess people that just joined the live stream, uh, who's actually getting interviewed? So Henry and Moore, you guys want to introduce yourselves again and talk uh, just about the Ninja for a Cure? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm, my name is Henry Ferrarin, um, founder of Ninja for a Cure. I'm with my girlfriend, Maura Sherman. She is a co-founder of Ninja for a Cure. She's basically the rock behind it. She does does all the organizational skills. I have ADD, so she helps with that stuff. Um, but um, a three-time American Ninja Warrior competitor, uh, decided to try to do something special with the American Ninja Warrior platform, started Ninja for a Cure. We're over $27,000 raised to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, just doing um, selling t-shirts, uh, ninjaforacure.com, all proceeds, all net proceeds go directly to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, and then doing little events, just recently had a basketball Ninja for a Cure event. Chris played. Chris is actually a really good basketball player. Joe Morosky played. Uh, James Beast McGrath. Uh, among hey, James is a little bit of a hack. He definitely yes. He's one of those ones, one of those people that just hates to lose, which makes him really tough to play. Yes, against. yes. And um, and Chris <laughs> and James did play one on one. Um, Chris ended up winning. It was a it was a bloodbath though. It was a there was fouls left and right. <laughs> it was definitely really tough uh, going head to head with James because, like I said, the man does not like to lose, and he's an athlete. Overall, he's you know six two and yeah. really strong, so he's tough to play against. But uh, a lot of fun, and, and we raised six thousand just from that one event, uh, straight to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Um, I'll continue to dye my beard pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's pink right now, and I'll have it pink for the show um, every season I'm able to compete. But um, yeah, so check out ninjafigure.com. Meanwhile, Justin Conway is about to clear our ring maze obstacle, and he's there. Wow. So Justin's uh, still has two making minutes great left. work of the course. He's still got about a minute 40 left. Uh, so I feel like he's got to hustle. He's got to do the dominoes, the wall, and the wing nuts, and the invisible ladder. So he's got a lot, a lot to do in a short amount of time, and time's ticking away. He's probably uh, trying to take an, a smart approach, recover some of that lactic acid buildup. Because uh, as we've seen before, it's a pumpy course. Uh, I mean, Henry, you pumped out on the, the arm rings. What was your take? Do you think you could have waited longer, or do you think uh, you had to go when you were there? I mean, in hindsight, I'm one of the earlier competitors to go um, at this NNL. By the way, Warrior Factory, amazing, amazing gym. What, it, what Carl Fantuzio has done here is really, really special. But um, yeah, in hindsight, it, maybe if I took like 15 more seconds of rest, I would have cleared. 
Um, I was pretty pumped. I got to work my grip endurance a little better, but uh, I don't know if I would have cleared the wing nut went while I was that tired. But um, So speaking of, we got Conway going into the wing nut. He has about 50 seconds left. He's got to clear oh, man. both wing nuts and get up the invisible ladder. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. That's a lot of obstacles to do in a short amount of time. This is going to be tough. He's got to go now. Yeah, he's definitely got to go. It's getting close to the oh, he's hesitating. mark. Uh, I, I really think he should have jumped a little bit sooner. Uh, he's going to have to really rush this dismount. Oh. oh, man. Yeah, I think if there was either a little bit more time or if he was a little less pumped, he could have had it. Uh, but that's tough.